Hey guys, hey groups, YouTubers alike. You have found the number one video of a series of what is going to hopefully be helpful tips for you in your vending business. We're going to talk about the things that are quite common first, so this may not pertain to the veteran seasoned operators, but uh, maybe by a uh, Video number six or eight, there'll be something you can pick up. Anyways, this is video number one. We are going to attempt to make one of these per week, addressing all the issues, common questions answered, etc. And uh, I think we're going to put these out on Wednesdays. We also have a series of videos that comes out on Saturday mornings, and that's a little more of the business end of the vending industry. Locations, equipment, products shopping, uh, you get the idea. So anyways, today we're going to talk about something that is common and it is about single price soda machines. Single price soda machines, some people may laugh, but I always had said over a cocktail with a, with a customer, maybe at a trade show, that if at some point I was ever dead broke, and I had to start over, which I would because this industry has been good to me. I would start with single price soda machines and probably 66 and 7600 AP snacks because they're reasonable, they're, they're, they're workhorses. In other words, this is kind of what I grew up with. They came out, single price soda machines been around forever. They've been around since bottles, but the good can machines came out by Dixie Narco. This was in probably the late 60s. They had some pretty good models and then towards the 70s they improved. But the really good stuff that I'm talking about today is from the 80s. I remember getting uh, the first load of Dixie Narco 368s from Pepsi in about 1985. These were machines that would come with either a Mars coin mech. They had Maka validators. I don't think the coin codes were online yet. They were they followed by just a year or two. So they had the old metal makas, which as we know are no good. They're no good anymore. So anyways, getting back to single price sodas, these have their drawbacks. Um, one of the things that's not a drawback is they are reasonably priced. They're all over the place for a hundred or two. The Dixie Narcos, there's about three different sizes. The coolers all interchange. 276, 368, 440. We used to put the 440s out in rural spots. Now this is when soda was 50 cents back in the 80s. And we would tell the customers because you're 30 or 40 or 50 miles from us, we would put the first two columns of Pepsi so it wouldn't run out and then the rest would be flavors. We would tell the customers and it would always be the top column that would run out first. The sold out light would come on. Call us when the first column goes empty and then we'll put it on our route we'll be out within 48 hours and uh, but when you finally go out there on something like a 440 there was some money in there I mean $150 in a cash box was quite a bit of money in 1985 1986 so anyways these are easily upgraded to MEI validators okay we all know MEI validators bar none you can argue with me if you want are the best they're the best for the money. Uh, in single price, I don't think you need a unit that takes fives. Those are a little bit more money. But a unit that takes just singles, it's about 100 bucks. They have a harness, and I'm going to show you this in a minute. They have a harness that's available. You put an MEI into a single price. Now, this can be in a Vendo, can be in a Dixie Narco. They're both equivalent machines. They're both very similar. Um, they take the same coin mix. Take the coin mix. Easy to identify. They all look the same on the front. Everybody knows. This looks like everything. But this is the Jones plug. I always called them a 9-pin plug. Some people call them an 8-pin. There's no right. There's no wrong. But anyways, those are single price. They're 110 volts. Don't be fooled if you ever get a 24-volt unit. Those do not go in the single price soda machines. Those are for snack machines. They're completely different. So anyways, I'm going to show you 
the plugins, how we update, and we put a decent coin mech in, the difference in coin mechs, and how you put an MEI in your single price soda. So stand by, let me get set up here and be right back on. All right, guys. Here we have the common 25, <clears throat> pardon me, and I like to say X1 because the two only means the bezel. Okay, let me show you the bezel. <clears throat> that is for a soda. This is a number one bezel, although I am showing you one that is iron. Okay, If you have a rough spot, it's only going to be as good as the machine it's bolted to. In other words, this is not plastic, it is iron, it's very heavy. Um, they can still smash the validator, they can still push it through with a sledgehammer if it's in a rural, rural area, but anyways, it bolts on the rural Pardon me, the iron one does not take a back plate like the plastic one does. So, all right, getting into the plugins. This is the data side, okay, of your harness. It goes in two thirds of the plug in, okay. Now you have this left over. And this is for your power wire. Okay, this is just a simple power wire. It's about 15 bucks. I always recommend you carry these cheap, cheap, cheap small harnesses because you never know when you're going to have a problem. Okay, simple plug in, just like so. And there you have the smart end ready to go. You mount your validator. Okay, now where does this go? Your 12 pin plug. This goes to your single price soda <clears throat> coin mech. Now, your coin mech has to have these plugins. Okay. See all these? The only one you're going to use is the 12 pin, and they don't all have these. Sometimes people have a soda machine that was only designed for coins. And sticking out of the top, it's only going to have the one wire with this on it. So you're going to have to upgrade your coin mech. Okay? This other one here, this is for a maca. This is not used. This is for decks in my career, spanning several decades. I've never known anybody to use decks in a single price soda. So, anyways, we plug this in, our 12 pin, like so. And that's all she wrote. Now, another common question is pricing. People always say, how do I price my soda machine? I want to raise the price. They got a, an old machine that's on 50 cents or 60 or 75 cents. Okay, see those dip switches up on the top? They are from left to right, and if you're so lucky as to have the sticker still on there. It tells you what everything does. In other words, the first one is a nickel. The next one's a dime. 20, 40, 80, 160, 320, if it goes that high. Now if you want to set it for, let's say, 75 cents. If you add up the first four, 5, 10, 20, and 40, 75 cents, okay? So for 75 cents, the first four would be on. Let's say you want to put it for a dollar you got to put the fifth one on, which is your 80 cent switch, and then the third one, which is your 20 cent. 80 and 20 is one dollar, and so on. So you get the idea. These other switches are options, the ones here on the far right. On a CoinCo, they're to the right. On an MEI, there might be a separate set of switches down here, but these are high-low high settings, Canadian settings. High-low means, let's say you have a machine with a coin mac but you don't have a bill validator okay you don't want to store twenty dollars worth of quarters in there you put it on the low setting for the tubes okay that way it only keeps about eight or ten quarters in the bottom 
the other ones go to the cache box. Now, you can't run it on low setting if you have a validator that takes $5 bills because guess what? You sell one item for a dollar with a five, you're going to give four dollars in change. So that's not really what it's designed for um, to take five dollar bills. So, anyways, the high low setting, I recommend you put it on low if your items are a dollar because if you take a one dollar bill, it doesn't give any change, anyways. Now, if it's on 75 cents, take a dollar bill, you're going to give back one quarter. So, you would want to keep more quarters in there and it holds about 20 bucks. Okay, now. Let's answer a few more questions on single price sodas. Let me uh, move my setup here. I'll be right back at you. Okay, let's, let's talk about a few myths about single price sodas. The most common one is I put money in and it goes right back to the coin return. This can be caused by several things, guys. Um, the first thing is you've got to have product in one column minimum okay you don't have to put the cans in there you know what works well to depress that sold out flap that's up against the front I get a roll of bounty that's about half used up so it's not it's not huge but it's half and it fits in nice uh, a bounty roll is the height of two cans and most single price sodas are meant to go double deep okay so anyways when testing put put some put eight eight cans in there or, or use my trick of the bounty paper towel roll okay now the machine says I'm ready to go I'm ready to take money guess what if it still doesn't take money and it rejects them now we're assuming we have a good coin mech in there let's say you've bought an update kit from us we're assuming that you're you're using a good coin mech because coin mechs can go bad and uh, act faulty okay the next common reason they don't take money is the machine is not back to home you pull off that front motor cover, which is that silver steel uh, metal cover. You look at the motors, and I wish I had a motor here at my little shop in Arizona, but I don't. We, we just work on coin mechs here at Validators. But anyways, you look at the notches, and on that round cam, it's a little bit bigger than a silver dollar. They're usually brown, but they can vary. You know, they can be blue. Anyways, there are a series of notches in there. Well, look across. The double columns are a little different than the single columns. That micro switch has to fall into the notch. That tells the machine that I am at the home position. If you have a column that's jammed and it has not returned home, it's not going to take more money because that machine is not smart enough like the newer ones to say, okay, column number seven is out, but we're going to let everybody else buy from the other columns. The single price are not that smart. They don't have a board. They have one, what we call a vend relay. Okay, when that 75 cents or a dollar goes in that coin mech, it pulses the machine and says, "Now I've taken enough money to give one product." So it energizes the vend relay. Okay, now if you have a jammed column that's not, it, it's it's halfway around. First of all, don't work on these columns with the power on. They can cut your fingers off. They are DC motors and they could move a locomotive, I think. They're so strong. So anyways, you may have to back up the motor to find out why you're in a jam. A lot of times people move a machine, they might move it on their back. A shim might fall out in the column, which is quite common, especially if you move them on their back. So f find the physical problem. Find out where your jam is. On the front of that little motor, you'll see a white, usually white, it's a little piece of plastic with a spring on it. This has to be free floating. This has to not be sticky. That thing is on a shaft and you should be able to to move it against that spring and it should go click right back. Okay. Now that little shaft that thing rides on, get one of these. Get an oiler. This is 10 weight. This is going to be your best friend. I recommend every six months at least a year guys you put a couple of drops of oil one on the end of the shaft because you can't get to the inner part of the shaft but the little shaft that sticks out that you can see when you've taken that motor cover off put a little drop of oil there but then find that motor brake that little white piece of plastic that rides on a on a shaft also and 
put a drop of oil in there, okay? It has to be free. So that's another reason that columns get in a jam. In other words, something gets sticky. Now, the worst problem is on a single price machine, what's going to cause that column to jackpot? In other words, empty the column. If that motor brake is stuck and does not let that motor stop, it's going to roll right past the notch every time and it's going to empty that column. So that's definitely a drawback. You need to maintain these machines. Um, another benefit is Dixie Narcos, the three models I, I talked about earlier, 276, 368, 440. 440 is the same footprint, by the way, as the 368. It's just taller. It's the 79-inch model as opposed to the 72-inch model. The coolers interchange. They slide right out. They interchange. The Vendos have a couple different models, but for the most part, they 80 or 85% of them do interchange. So another big plus, you don't have to carry a lot of parts. You always are going to need a spare cooler if you've got some soda machines out there. Once you're versed and a little bit experienced in swapping a cooler, do it at home. Take them out, clean them up, make sure the fans are, are all turning. Those fan motors down below, they're a little bit hard to get to unless you take the uh, cooler deck out. They're only 30 or 40 bucks. If they rattle, if they make noise, it's not if they fail, it's when they fail. And it's always on a Friday afternoon when it's 105 out and you're you know, you're sweating bullets. So anyways, I strongly recommend you play with these machines at home. I've talked about how the setup man is the most important person in your business. And if you're a small business, one guy, you're the setup man too. You don't, you not only make the, the sales calls, go pick up the equipment, do the shopping, run the route. You're the setup man. You have nobody to blame but yourself if you take a machine out there and it doesn't work properly. So anyways, guys, any questions? Um, put them in the comments. If you'd like to see videos on different items, and I have about 10 written down already that we're going to share tips with. So I hope you enjoyed our single price number one video. Um, like I said, these tips will come out once a week on a Wednesday. We appreciate you subscribing, and if you click that bell, guess what? When a new video comes out, you'll be sent a little alert that says, hey, number two is out. So anyways, guys, Appreciate you being here, and uh, I have some valuable links down below to some of our groups where we have some very sharp people, and uh, of course a link to my website. We do this for a living. Appreciate you being here, guys. For now, Doug at Doug's World Tour. Out.